hi everyone let's discuss about reproductive system first let's see what is reproduction reproduction is the ability of an organism to produce its offspring and what happens in human beings and in human beings the process of reproduction is sexual reproduction and what about the organs and are they same in males and females no it is it is different it is different anatomically and physiologically the reproductive organs of the male and female reproductive system are different anatomically and physiologically and what are their gametes and are they called the same no they are called different so male re- gamete is called spermatozoa and the female gamete is called ova and what happens afterwards and they they take place fertilization and these ova and spermatozoa they fuse together and that process of fusing of ova and spermatozoa is called fertilization and what happens after that so after fertilization there is a single cell cell which has been formed and that single cell is called zygote and zygote is the result of fertilization of ova and spermatozoa and uh, then the zygote it develops into an embryo the zygote develops into an embryo and where does this embryo getting implanted and this embryo gets implanted into the inner wall of the uterus and which is getting implanted into the inner layer which is the endometrium which is called endometrium and it is getting implanted into the endometrium or the inner layer of the uterus and there it gets implanted and it grows and it develops for a period of 40 weeks it fetus there the fetus which is growing and developing for a period of 10 months or 40 weeks approximately then let's first discuss about the female reproductive system and later on we'll discuss about the male reproductive system and here let's see what are the functions played by the female reproductive system so it is helping in the production of ova ova is the is a female egg cell which is released from the ovary during ovulation and it is the female reproductive system is providing a suitable environment for fertilization this is helping in fertilization and it is also providing an environment for the growth of the fetus and it provides a suitable environment for the growth of the fetus for a period of 10 months and it is providing nourishment for the growing fetus and nourishment is also be provided by um, the f- uh, female reproductive system or uh, you especially um, through the umbilical cord which is getting its nourishment uh, from the mother through the umbilical cord and it is also helping in the childbirth female reproductive system assists in childbirth delivery and it also helps in lactation feeding the baby after the delivery okay we can divide it it broadly into two so female reproductive system can be broadly divided into two the first one is external genitalia that which we are going to discuss in this uh, lesson and next is internal genitalia okay so that it can be divided into two external genitalia the first one external genitalia and the next is internal genitalia first let's see what is external genitalia the external genitalia includes the external organs of the reproduction uh, in females so this is uh, which is present outside the body cavity outside the pelvic cavity all other organs which are present in the external internal genitalia are present within the pelvic cavity here external genitalia is present outside the body cavity and uh, which is this external genitalia can also be called vulva 
and there are different structures present in the vulva or in the external genitalia that include labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, vestibule, vestibular glands, uh, vaginal opening and hymen. Let's see one by one. So this is a diagram representing the external genitalia or the vulva. So here you can see uh, labia majora, the, the outer fold of skin, labia majora. Enough to that there is a too small a fold of skin, labia minora. And uh, within the labia minora, this gap is called the vestibule. And within the vestibule, there is an opening for the vagina, and that is called vaginal opening. And above that, anterior to that, there is an opening of the for the urethra, urethral opening called urethral opening. Okay, and at the upper border of the labia minora, there is a structure called clitoris. And uh, this area is called Mons pubis, which is an uh, area um, present over the symphysis pubis. Let's see that in one by one. So, labia majora. These are the two large fold of skin. Two large fold of skin present on the outer border of the vulva. There is a, a two large fold of skin present the outer border of the valve this on the outer border of the valve and that is called labia majora okay and this is formed of skin fat and uh, fibrous tissue fat tissues and fibrous tissues and uh, it consists of a particular kind of glands and those glands are called sebaceous glands and these sebaceous glands are responsible for secretion of an oily substance or an oily material called sebum and which helps in lubricating the vulva. Okay, it lubricates the vulva, the sebum, oily substance uh, lubricates the vulva. And there are hairs, there are hairs present on the mons pubis and the uh, lateral aspect or lateral surfaces of the labia majora and they are called pubic hairs. So here you can see there are hairs, there are hairs present and those hairs are pressed or called pubic hairs and they are present on the over the mons pubis and on the lateral aspects of uh, the labia majora. Now we will discuss about labia minora. These are the two smaller fold of skin present in the, to the labia majora. These are the two smaller folds of skin to smaller folds of skin present inner to the labia majora and they also contain those particular kind of glands and they are also called sebaceous glands which secrete sebum which helps in lubricating the again help in lubricating the vulva the next structure we are going to discuss is clitoris the clitoris and this clitoris corresponds to penis in males is corresponding to the penis in the males and which has no reproductive function no particular reproductive function no particular reproductive function and it is helping in sexual stimulation and um, so here it is made of erectile tissue and sensory nerve endings these sensory nerve endings present in the clitoris helps in this uh, um, sexual stimulation okay next is vestibule the vestibule is nothing but is a gap between the labia minora there's a cleft between the present between the labia minora and they are called and that is called that gap between the labia minora is called this is labia minora and there is a gap between them and that is called the vestibule vestibule and into the vestibule there are few structures that opens and the structures that opens into the vestibule are the first one vagina which opens at the vaginal opening the urethra which opens at the urethral opening and there are openings of the ducts of vestibular glands 
vestibular glands uh, has its ducts and those ducts also opens into the vestibule now let's see vestibular glands there are glands which are present on either side of the vaginal opening and which opens into the vestibule and they are called vestibular glands and they are also called Bartholin's glands they are also called vestibular glands are also called Bartholin glands and these vestibular glands are present on either side of the vaginal opening they are present on either side of the vaginal opening and it has ducts then those ducts also opens into the vestibule and it secretes mucus this the its secretion of the secretion from the vestibular glands is mucus a thick sticky fluid and which is helping in moistening the vulva which helps in moistening the vulva and next is the vaginal opening there is this is the opening of the vagina which opens into the vestibule and uh, this vaginal opening I'll show you in the diagram so here there is vaginal opening you can see the vaginal opening and uh, this is an opening of the vagina so there is a uh, tube fibromuscular tube which goes in and joins with the uh, uterus and that vagina opens into the vestibule opens at the point of the vestibule and that opening of the vagina is called vaginal opening then next is hymen and hymen is a membrane that that closes or that partially occludes the vaginal opening and the vaginal opening has been partially closed by a membrane structure called the hymen and uh, this is not completely um, closed there is an, a small opening an opening for the flow of menstrual fluid the menstrual blood during menstrual cycles during the uh, menstrual phase the menstrual blood from the uterus uh, comes out through the vagina and which is being sent out through the small opening present in the hymen um, and that's all about the external genitalia i hope you all understood and thank you